The KF-21 Borome has begun conducting aerial refueling tests as part of its development phase. The system uses a flying boom system similar to the US F-16 and F-15 fighters, and will allow the KF-21 to operate at longer distances or for longer periods of time. With the KF-21 Borome a potential candidate for the Philippine Air Force's future MRF Batch 2 program, the use of boom aerial refueling means the PAF will need to invest in more expensive aerial refueling tankers such as the A330 MRTT or KC-46 Pegasus as cheaper alternatives such as the KC-130s and A400 MRTTs do not use such a system. This is one area where the JAS-39 Gripen benefits the PAF in the long run as it can use the probe and drogue aerial refueling systems used by the KC-130 and A-400 MRTT. Other combat aircraft that use probes and drogues are the French Rafale and multinational Eurofighter, as well as the F-A-18E, F-Super Hornet and the F-35B and F-35C variants of the Lightning II. South Korea's locally developed KF-21 Borome Next Generation Fighter Program continues to advance at an impressive pace, the latest milestone involving the first air-to-air -air refueling trials, a little more than 18 months after the prototype first flew, an event you can read about here. Meanwhile, six prototypes, including a two-seater, have been completed and there are plans to deliver a first production example to the Republic of Korea Air Force, ROKAF in the second half of 2026. The Defense Acquisition Program Administration, DAPA, which manages South Korean defense procurement, confirmed that the first aerial refueling flight test of the KF-21 took place today, involving the fifth KF-21 prototype. The aircraft was refueled from an Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport, MRTT, which is known in ROKAF service as the KC-330 Cygnus. KF-21 Prototype 5 took off from the runway of the 3rd Air Force Training Wing at 9.45 a.m. today and successfully performed an aerial refueling flight over the South Sea, DAPA said. The ROKAF's 3rd Flying Training Wing, as it's normally designated, is located at Seichen Airport in the southeast of the country. Flying as a chase plane to monitor the flight was a two-seat F-A-50 light combat aircraft. An accompanying video shows the flight test, in which the KF-21 connects with the tanker's refueling boom before successfully uncoupling. A statement from the South Korean Ministry of Defense is ambiguous as to whether actual fuel was transferred, but that would be unusual for the first test of this kind. During the flight test, the DAPA focused on confirming and evaluating the impact of turbulence occurring behind the aerial refueling tanker on control, the safety of connection and separation with the tanker, and the aerial refueling functions such as fuel transfer, the South Korean Ministry of Defense explained. The ministry also said that, once in service, a single aerial refueling hookup is typically expected to increase the operational radius of the KF-21 by at least 50%. The success of this aerial refueling flight test is significant in that it can expand the operational radius and operating time of the KF-21, contributing to securing the Air Force's long-distance operational capabilities as well as strengthening its military power, said No G-Man, head of the Korea Fighter Program at the DAPA. More refueling trials will follow, with DAPA working to ensure that fuel can be transferred from the tanker to the KF-21 across different parts of the flight envelope including different altitudes and speeds, in the course of around 60 test sorties. This is part of a broader flight test program that is aimed to be wrapped up in the first half of 2026. If successful, then the first examples of production KF-21 should be handed over to the military before the end of the same year. This comes after the program was formally launched in 2016, although preliminary studies date back at least to 2012 followed by the rollout of the first prototype in April 2021, and the first flight in July 2022. In May last year, the KF-21 was provisionally judged, fit for combat. By any measure, this is an extremely rapid development schedule, even more so for a next-generation fighter program for that are notoriously prone to delays as well as cost overruns.